Okay, like it, uh, don't like it. We're just going to move on just a little bit here. Okay, because again, we just want to keep, uh, keep going over. Characteristics of this phylum are what? There's three you could give. Some of them we haven't quite discussed in in detail, but well, okay. They have radial symmetry. That's right. And they have tentacles, and those tentacles then produce what? Venom. Venom. That's right. So those are three characteristics that you're going to want to uh, be able to correlate with this chapter. Okay. So one of the aspects that what we see. Digestion takes place not only just here in the gastrovascular cavity, but also in the tentacles. And probably what might be the strangest thing that stuck out in your mind about jellyfish that you observed yesterday and the day before? Something you would never guess with an archaic animal like that. That they can see. What's that? And they sleep. That's another one, too. So, unlike sharks, okay, sharks have to keep on moving because if a shark does not keep moving, it's not that they, you could say they, basically they drown. Why would that be? That doesn't make any sense. They live in water. We're not quite that far yet, but they have to have water flow over their gills. See, I got to look good in front of when administration walks in here. No, no, I just. Well, technically you are athletic directing. Oh, for Brookings. Oh, they called you. Uh, man, you got connections. Was it uh, Randy? Is that, you know him? Okay. I, I look, God, there might be a chance. It looks like it's clearing, but it must be terrible up there already. But sorry to miscategorize no, yourself. So it's Thursday, Mr. Deitch. It's Thursday. See, now, see, we've got to have these conversations because you're not on camera. That way people are wondering, what's going on in that classroom? Yeah. See ya. Yeah. Oh, I don't know if it picks up that far. It, it might. That's right. Anyway, thank you much. Okay, so with what we see here, okay, so when we're looking at this body structure, okay, outer layer that surrounds the gastrovascular cavity. Do we as humans, do we have a structure called the epidermis as well? Yes, we do. And that's the surface of our skin. Now, one way that you got to look at this, when we say cavity, okay, we usually associate that to digestion or your mouth, why? Because when you go see the dentist, they say, ooh, you gotta have some work done because you've got cavities. And inside your teeth, it's just open pockets or open areas, okay? We have cavities inside our bodies, our bodies, thoracic, abdominal, uh, cranial, oral, okay? All of those are just different areas that house different types of organs. Well, this is no different. So with this, even though it's inside the animal, it's still, okay, still an epidermis because it's the outer layer inside that gastrovascular cavity. So even inside our oral cavity, we still have skin on the outer side. That, that makes your, the roof of your mouth is called what? It starts with a P. You stack things on them, you move them with a forklift. You said it. Pallets. Yeah. Hard and soft pallet. Okay.
So we continue on, okay? So then this gastrodermis, the inner layer, has an epidermis, but it also has an inner layer of tissue. So an epidermis, a mesoglia, then a gastrodermis. So we'll, we'll come back to this. I just want to, I think the next one would be the last one that we, no, not quite. Okay. Did I? Do I need to back up again? Oh, I thought I did. Sorry. Okay. I suppose if you really want to be specific, you could say there's one aspect about this phylum that was a hallmark in evolution. What would that possibly be? It's the first time that we see what? This is swimming, so it's doing what? As opposed to the sponges. Moving, yeah, that's a hallmark of evolution, was movement. Yep. Okay. So, we move on, do this one, and then that one, and then that would be, we will stop at the end of this slide here. Then the rest of the time, you can work on your journals, whatever it is you see fit that you need to work on. So sometimes we start combining a lot of these terms. For instance, in a more advanced sense, well past the cellular level, in humans and mammals, what would a cardiovascular system be? The cardio part means your heart, and the vascular portion would be what? Sometimes you can see it in coaches when they get really, really angry. Well, not angry, but uh, they're dealing with issues and something happens in their forehead their veins pop out okay so it's all the uh, different uh, blood vessels that make up the vascular system then. okay I wouldn't say that coaches get upset maybe they just get excited about trying to get their point across Been known to do that in basketball before a long time ago okay So when you look at this structure here, located around the mouth, secretes mucus, okay? Two reasons for that, okay? What, what would you notice about, okay, you're exercising a lot or maybe uh, you're working in a dusty area and then you, you, you cough up sputum, okay? What's in its type of mucus? What's true about that mucus if you were to? It, I know it's, you don't want to put that in your hand, but if you put it and you rub it around, what would be true about that mucus? Do you think? Uh, I, uh, in a way, yes, but also works as a lubricant then as well. So what we see here, 
when it's located around the mouth, it's going to do a protective function for inside that gastrovascular cavity because do we have mucus in our stomach? Yes, we do. We have mucus cells that secrete that because why might that be for humans? Why do we have to have mucus secreted inside of our stomach? It, has, it, it can because pH conditions are pretty rough inside your stomach. So if you did not have a buffer on there provided by mucus, that acid would probably eat right through. And we've all, well I shouldn't say we've all heard this, but it, it is possible that if you could take stomach acid, put it into a beaker, and then set eight penny or 16 penny nail in there, I don't know how long, but eventually you'd come back and where's that nail? It's gone. It's dissolved by the stomach acid, okay? Because it's just that strong of a component. So that's why you have to have that type of protection, whether it's here with gland cells or with mucus cells, a little more advanced in that of humans. Okay, we will pick up with this body structure uh, tomorrow and probably next week. Uh, I'm thinking maybe Wednesday we'll have a vocab quiz in here. You have those terms. I, I don't know if we'll get this chapter wrapped up. I don't think so but uh, we shall see. We don't have a whole lot left. We've got two more. Then we get into the different classes. So, so things that we want you to know, make sure you know the characteristics of this phylum, and then be able to distinguish the three classes. We haven't got into them yet. One is hydrozoa, second is scyphozoa, and third is anthozoa. And yes, they're all going to have characteristics in common. They have a tentacles that hang down or sea an enemy where it has a crown of tentacles going up so uh, with those tentacles they all produce boy or venom so those are two characteristics they have that radial symmetry and we'll get into those classes uh, later on uh, possibly tomorrow next week